It takes even the most skilled VBA programmer some time to examine an unfamiliar workbook's code and learn how it operates. Whether you're viewing a new workbook or one that you created some time ago, you'll find that adding comments to the code helps you understand its operation much more quickly. To add a comment, just open a code module, type a single quotation mark, and then type in your comment. So in this case, it could be calculates 9% sales tax. And when you press enter or move off that line using an arrow key, Excel highlights that code in green, indicating that it's a comment. You can also add a comment at the end of a line of code by typing a single quote and then typing the comment. So for example, if I wanted to just say that's 9% and move off the line pressing the down arrow key, then everything to the right of the quotation mark is considered to be a comment. After you type a single quotation mark, everything to its right is treated as a comment. So for example, you can't type another single quotation mark and put in more code. It just doesn't work that way. And that's it. Those are the mechanics of adding comments to your VBA code. But the real secret to creating effective comments is to know when and where to add them. The first comment I add to any non-trivial subroutine or function includes my name and when I created the procedure. Then, if I think there's any chance the procedure's purpose is unclear, which it is almost all the time, I add a comment describing what the code does and the name of the workbook. I add the workbook name just in case someone copies the code to another workbook and would like to see how the original workbook was structured so they don't have to try to visualize it based on the code. As I write a procedure, I add comments for each segment of the code. A segment is what I call a subset of a procedure that performs a specific task. For example, the code in this segment calculates sales tax due on a purchase where the tax rate is 9%. It's easy to see that the calculation adds 9% of a number to the original number, but it's not immediately obvious that the 9% represents sales tax. This is the comment that provides that information. You can also use comments to prevent Excel from running statements in your macro, which comes in very handy when you're testing your procedure. As a simple example, let's say that you have this worksheet. And in cell C7, you have a value that you want to perform a calculation on. When I go back to the code, again by pressing Alt F11, you'll see that this procedure has some normal code here and a line of code that has been made into a comment so it won't run. The top line calculates sales tax based on the active cells value. And in this case, the sales tax rate is 9%. And then this line attempts to write the value of the calculation into cell E7. And the final line tries to write it into cell D7. The question is which of these two lines of code is correct. It's a simple example, but you'll see how it works in a second. I will click inside the body of the macro and press F5. And when I switch back to my workbook, you'll see that Excel wrote the value in cell E7, which is not my target destination. So I will delete this table column. Click cell C7 again, because remember my macro takes the active cells value and I'll switch back to the VB editor. And now I will put a single quote mark in front of that line, commenting it out, and remove the quote mark from here, which means that the line will now be executed. I'm inside the body of the macro, so I'll press F5, run it, and switch back to my workbook, and you can see that I have the new price, including the sales tax. VBA comments seem pretty simple, and in many ways they are. That said, you should add comments to your code so you can refer back to them over the next two, five, or 10 years that you and your successors will be working with your code. You can also use comments to prevent code from running while you test various solutions. When you find a code segment that works, you can delete your other attempts or cut and paste them into a text document as an inspiration for future work.